No one understands how often that happens. We're trying to get Rudy on for next week. Rudy Sarzo, my musician buddy, because I watched that documentary. And Lee, Lee's not a music guy, but you should watch it anyway. I'm definitely going to watch it. It's called uh, Hired Gun. What's that? About music agents? It's about hired guns. People That's cool. People who get hired to join a band for a salary and what happens to them. And what happens huh. to their careers? And Interesting. That'd how be they cool. get, you know, they 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 get money for some of them get money for writing, some of them don't get dick. That sounds great, actually. They, they Where's that on? It's on Netflix. Netflix. On Netflix. And they talk about, you know, they talk about uh, not Bruce Springsteen, but the other guy, Billy Joel. He oh, started this him. band with these three guys, and he did all these tours with them. And one day, he's doing this new tour, and two of the guys, three of the guys, two of the guys don't get calls. And it's like, it is fascinating, happened? yeah. And then Billy Joel never even called him and gave because Billy Joel's the name. He doesn't need. He could hire anybody in the and background. One, and one of the guys killed themselves. Oh. And then Buddy DeVito, the drummer, went on. And then one day, Buddy DeVito was going through a divorce. He went up to Billy Joel and he goes, "Hey man, can you uh, give me some extra money?" And Billy Joel told him, "I can't do it." And all of a sudden, he wasn't on the plane with him no more. Damn. And pretty soon. He That's nuts when you're that back. rich and that greedy, though. Like well, Billy had, Joel? No, no, no. He had just got robbed by his management for oh, $11 okay. million. Dollars, so now he put a fucking seatbelt on everything. Because I just. put a seatbelt on everything. If I had money, I would pay for all my friends to do everything. You know I, what I mean? I really would. Like my good friends. Like my friends that have been around. Like I would never let them pick up a check ever. I just feel like once you have it, so many people struggle. You know, it's an interesting episode in The Sopranos where. Christopher gets pissed off because he has to pick up checks. He's the low man on the totem pole. Yeah. And he keeps us to pick up checks. These are $800 checks. Yeah, yeah, These yeah. are not $42 yeah. in a deli. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Ten sixty nine checks. for a bagel. Chipotle, seven people. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. This is fucking... Uh, Morton's. Morton's six gorillas going to eat. I like that you picked Morton's, by the way. It's yeah, like the that's, most that's, expensive yeah, steakhouse. Because no, that's where they went. <laughs> they went to a steakhouse and then they yeah. went to Atlantic City. Yeah. And the episode... And he goes to him, he goes, and Christopher goes to Tony, he goes, hey man, what the fuck? I'm pissed because I can't keep picking up these tabs. He goes, what are you fucking talking about? You know how many fucking tabs I picked up and fuck you? He goes, Peter Lugas with Fat Tony Salerno, those guys are ordering cigars and fucking wines. And so he goes, listen, what are you mad about? Someday, some kid's going to buy you fucking dinner. And let me tell you something, for years... You know, when you go on the road with Joe Rogan, that motherfucker doesn't play. Like, that dude just does not play. Like, he goes to fucking Morton's. Yeah. We we go. Like, we He's so generous. There. He's very generous. Yeah, I see him you. tip 100 bucks a drink sometimes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and you fucking, uh, you have to do that. Like, when yeah. I run with Lee, I'll pick up a tab. You know, Lee yeah. will try and I'll tell him, no, Lee, let him, you know, whatever, the road, whatever the fuck. Lee, what are you doing? <laughs> Lee's no, sitting there looking at you like a fucking Chinese Lee, go sparrow. get me a drink. <laughs> Buy my drinks, Lee. Lee's looking at you from behind going, Jesus Christ, what I do to smell her shoulder. <laughs> I do what I do to smell her little fucking like shoulder. Read my mind, Can I ask you something? This is this is unrelated, but I was thinking about you talking your first year in Hollywood. Because you're a guy, obviously, and I'm a woman. I'm curious. Like, my first couple years in Hollywood, probably first two years, I went to so many meetings and auditions that now in hindsight, I'm like, oh, that guy definitely just wanted to be in a room alone with me for hours. Or, you know, I went on auditions. How long are auditions for you? I went to, I'm okay, short. listen, this is what I mean. I wonder if this happens to guys or if it's only women. Because when I was new in town, I would go to any audition. You know how it is. You'll say yes to anything, right? I had this audition one day for a short film. And the kid was like, he'd won like two awards for like other short films he made. I'm like, he was young, but I was like, maybe he's like the next Steven Spielberg. Like, who the fuck knows? I'll go. So I go to this house and um, I show up and the kid's like, so the scene you're in is you're playing the girlfriend of the father and you sneak in the house late at night to have sex with this guy and his son's in the next room over. I play the son and I'm going to hear you guys fucking. So... We won't see you fucking, but we'll hear the sex noises, and then we'll show you sneaking back out, and then you run into me in the hallway. I'm like, okay, cool. So we're going to run the dialogue in the hallway? He's like, well, first I want to get just your sex sounds 
on camera just because that's going to be, you know, we need you to make realistic sex sounds. Mind you, I'm like 22, 23. It's my first year here. And in my head, I'm like, this seems like not real. Like, why would he need my <laughs> sex noises on camera? But then I'm like, well, this kid has won awards. So I should probably. I should Who sent you on this? I was so stupid. I got it off like Actors Access. Uh -huh. You know how it no, is. You just no, submit no, for every yeah, fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay, do you really need the video? Can we just record the audio? And he's like, well, you know, we're, then we're going to run the line. So we'll just tape the whole thing. So some kid somewhere, this kid had to be 21, by the way, and in, in a mansion in Westwood, probably like his parents own this place and he's doing this for fun. I sat there and faked an orgasm like when Harry met Sally style on camera for this kid and then i did the whole thing you put clothes on during it yeah totally have my clothes on. i'm just sitting on a couch slate my name fake the orgasm then afterwards i go okay so um now are you ready to <sighs> run the hallway scene and he was like you know actually i don't think it's gonna work out <laughs> like my fake orgasm wasn't good enough so i had to leave and i didn't get to run the lines and i got in my car and i cried and I was crying partly because I knew I didn't do a good job. But then at the time, I was also like married and I was like so green. And I also cried because I felt guilty. Like I was like, oh my God, this probably wasn't a real audition. What if I had just like kind of auditioned for like porno? And I started crying and I called my husband and told him and he was like horrified. Like I can't, this is why you should come back to the Midwest. You shouldn't be out there. He wasn't even here with me. So some kid somewhere has a tape of me when I'm 22. Fake orgasming. And he's already whacked off to a thousand <laughs> times. Imagine how he many girls like, he got. He put like some Chinese, and that shit happens here. All the time. Oh, I, mean, I can't believe when you were saying that story. What's on, uh, you know what Hollywood High is? You know what Hollywood High School is? The high is? school? Yeah. Yeah, it's on. Yeah. What is Isn't it, it like it's Hollywood on? and Highland? Yeah. Uh, Near there. No, no, so Sunset now. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Sunset and Highland. Hold on one second. Okay, if you think of going east, there's a little mall in there. There's a little mall in there. They yeah, have I know like what you're talking about. They used to have a Buffalo Wild Wings, oh, a shit. Starbucks. There's a Burger King, and it's across the street. I know what you're talking about. <sighs> there's still a Starbucks. Well, that little mall in there, in the bottom, bottom floor, there was a little fucking theater. I don't know what it was called, but it was a fucking dive. <laughs> And I had gone there to do something else. And one day I said, theater. And I was the type of guy in those days. There was a girl that lived in town. Yeah. Remember, she used to book the sushi joint on Coenga. Ye ten for Rub Rudy. Ruby. Oh, on Coenga. No. Ruby. On Coenga and Hollywood Boulevard, you walk 50 yards. And there used to be a Japanese restaurant that was booked by this girl. And it was the coolest place. Huh. On Tuesday nights, it was the coolest place. And I lived around the corner. So what I was trying to do was to get comedy more in the area. Like the I.O. was doing comedy stand-up on yeah. Fridays at midnight. Uh, she, Ruby, did it on Tuesday nights. I think in the place would back up with agents and shit. Oh, wow. Yeah, because there's food in that area and they got shit to do. Yeah. It's different locations. They won't go to the improv in those places. No, that's too easy for them. They'll go down there. But for them to hunt talent. We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.